We are in the golden age of connectivity. In today's world, if you are not tweeting whilst texting and listening to a couple of podcasts just after updating Facebook but before starting an online game with your global alliance, then you are not apparently as connected as you may think. I am a self-confessed gadget man. If it is shiny, has moving parts, connects via Bluetooth, or just looks incredibly cool, I will want it. I am shallow. This is my vice. More than anything, I am an Apple fanboy. I'm hooked. Stick an apple on it and I will buy it. My home is littered with the glory that is Apple. This makes for interesting school board meetings, as one member is an enterprise account executive for Microsoft. I am such an Apple gadget man that even the teachers at school know what to bring me back from a trip to one infinite loop Cupertino. Apple's latest gadget is called the iPen. Only Apple could come up with an amazing way to store information in an offline, persistent world state. The boot time on this technology is instant and available to the user at any time regardless of cloud server status or fluctuations in power supply. But I want to focus on the days of leg warmers, Devo and roller blackboards. The days when I was a student in a brand new school that had open learning spaces with collaborative zones, quiet areas and amazing new technology. The OHP hit school with the buzz of an Apple product launch. It was glitzy, it was flash. It required professional development in order to turn it on, keep it clean and replace bulbs. Some teachers thought, goodbye Blackboard, OHTs, I can use them again and again. I was lucky I had an innovative teacher who used the OHP to produce the first PowerPoint I had seen, a volcano with OHT overlays that showed the various characteristics of an eruption. Better still, he encouraged us to make our own overlay presentations. He allowed us to use it for shadow puppet plays. He was innovative. Sama the use of that technology, Reuben. Then I went to high school, where, like all fifth formers, I was involved in New Zealand's first compulsory bring your own device program. It was met with little resistance and cost the equivalent of $142 in today's money. The Casio FX82C was a marvel of the time. My parents couldn't really afford it, so asked if they could get the cheaper, sharp version. This was met with the type of brand snobbery that I am guilty of today. I was lucky that my teacher embraced the device, allowing us to use it in everyday maths learning. Other classes were not so lucky. They had a two-hour, this is what the buttons do, now back to how real mathematicians work, looking up cosine tables. I compare this technology with what I have access to today, and I laugh. But the really funny thing is, imagine what our kids will be saying in 20 years' time. Remember when we used iPads? They were so quaint. I used a Galaxy Note too. I had to type on the screen or speak really slowly to get it to work. None of the thought-driven interface in the latest Android vanilla bean sorbet with pineapple topping operating system. These were the tools of yesterday. Teachers chose to use them according to their own mental models of teaching and learning. They either embraced or devalued the technology by their attitude to change and growth. Arduino, 3D printing, student devices, robotics and coding are met with the same mental models today. We are kidding ourselves if we think these are future-focused technologies. They are the technology of the now. What we use today will be obsolete within the blink of an eye. At the end of 2012, I had no idea I would have built my own 3D printer within the first three months of 2013, or be in a position to look at coding or robotics for all our children. So if it isn't about the technology... Why do teachers still think the E in e-learning stands for electronic? Mr Thorniewell knew what it stood for in 1982. Mr Foster knew what it meant in 1986. All of us know what the E stands for. Effective learning. Effective teachers use the technology of the day, the here and the now, to help cause learning. 
because effective teachers understand context and they understand the world of students. Right now, at this point in time, that world is digital. I am often asked what my killer app is. My stock standard reply has been there isn't one. But when you really think about it, there are many. You are the killer apps that every child needs. Thinking teachers who adapt to change.